We now go to our reporter, Laura Windsor, with a segment about enjoying sexual intimacy later in life. In the first two decades of the 21st century, 40 million women in the United States will go through menopause. Some of the issues that these women have a good chance of facing include a diminished sex drive and pain during intercourse. We spoke to an obstetric and gynecological specialist, Dr. Leah Milheiser, who talks about postmenopausal women today. The postmenopausal woman today is very different than the image that we had maybe back in the 70s or the 80s. Growing up, to me, Edith Bunker was the postmenopausal woman. Today's postmenopausal woman wants to feel more like Samantha from Sex and the City. She's career oriented, she looks at herself as an equal in the relationship, and she definitely wants to fight evolution when it comes to sexual function. There is a theory of evolution called the grandmother effect, and that theory tries to explain why women went into menopause in the first place. Our ancient ancestors were probably able to conceive up until the time they died, whether that happened in childbirth or it was a natural event. However, if you think about it, if women were able to conceive up until they died, there was no one to take care of their offspring, and there was no one to take care of their children's offspring. And so what that meant is a possible non-continuation of the species. So the feeling is, if you believe in the grandmother effect, that women underwent menopause in order to help with future generations. So. When it comes to talking about menopause, and I will tell you that the age of menopause has not changed over recorded time. So we know that it's about 51. It has stayed at the age of 51 as long as we know. Now, when a woman goes through menopause, if we think that this was an evolutionary process so that she couldn't have more kids, remember, we're just animals, probably she wouldn't need to have a libido anymore either once she went through menopause because you're not procreating anymore. So what we see in postmenopausal women is their sex drive goes down and they develop this vaginal dryness. And this happens because their estrogen and testosterone levels decrease postmenopausally. But again, we are evolved beings. And this new postmenopausal woman, they're doing everything they can to remain a sexually active being, oftentimes until the time they die. Women remain sexually active throughout their life. Research tells us this. There was an interesting study that was done in Chicago in 2007, where they looked at men and women living in residential communities. And what they found was very interesting. They found that the majority of people between the ages of 55 and up until their 80s were still sexually active. Men tended to be more sexually active than women, and this may have something to do with the fact that after a woman loses a long-term partner, she's less likely to find another partner, whereas men were in this study. We even found that 26% of people between the ages of 75 and 85 were still sexually active. In the postmenopausal years, they may experience vaginal dryness, painful intercourse, and low libido. These are very common side effects. It's very important for women to understand that sex does not mean just penetrative intercourse. There are so many other activities that can be incorporated into a sexual act. There are many options for the treatment of female sexual dysfunction. When it comes to low libido, there's non-hormonal options, over-the-counter options, and then there's the off-label treatments, because remember, there's no FDA-approved treatment for low libido. When it comes to the over-the-counter treatments, there's something called Arginmax. Arginmax is a blend of several herbs, which is shown in studies to be effective in improving libido in postmenopausal women, and there's no hormone in this type of over-the-counter therapy. There's also testosterone therapy, which can be uh, prescribed by your physician, and that needs to be discussed in terms of what those risks and benefits are, because it's not appropriate for everyone. The second area that I want to talk about is female sexual pain, dyspareunia, and vaginismus. For the treatment of dyspareunia, we always recommend as a first-line therapy a vaginal moisturizer or a, a vaginal lubricant during sex. Lubricants come in many different varieties. There's a water-based, silicone-based, and then an oil-based. For women who have a lot of dryness, a silicone-based lubricant can be really helpful because it lasts a lot longer, it's more moisturizing, and it doesn't cause infection. For women who tend to be more prone to infections, they really want to focus on lubricants that may not have glycerin in them or try the water-based options. For the treatment of vaginismus, oftentimes we will recommend pelvic floor physical therapy 
as well as dilator therapy. This is an example of a dilator, and basically it's placed in the vagina for a prescribed amount of time during the week. The women will just leave it there, and over time they will go to bigger and bigger dilator sizes, so effectively training the muscles to relax around the dilator. Lastly, there's the treatment of vaginal orgasmic disorder or female orgasmic disorder. Viagra has been shown to be effective in women, especially those using SSRI medications, medications that are commonly used for depression. Enjoying an active sex life can increase longevity and health amongst older women who want to remain vibrant and sexy. For the American Health Journal, I'm Laura Windsor.